Hello and welcome to another video. Today, before we get started, take a quick look at this. Thought it was going to be a good idea to spruce up the garage, make it get a little bit more presentable for videos and stuff like that. And then we got a storm. Check this out. The garage got completely flooded. My new carpet. The whole garage is ringing. And to make matters even worse, the only way that I can work on the Impreza is outside in the driveway, which ain't happening at the moment. I started doing a video about doing the front slam panel, storm hit, panels like half on the car, covered up. Absolutely gutted about it. So the only thing that I can do is crack on with some more bits. And what are those bits? Well, I've taken the front bumper off because it was a bit worse for wear. It needed, it needed a good refurbishment before it goes back on the car, which is really scuffed up. This is kind of hanging off down here. Got a bit of lacquer peel going on here. You can see it's seen a few kerbs or speed bumps in its time. Bit of a small crack there. Again, bit of a gap in there. Oh, something else that I've been working on as well. This is actually the splitter that came off the bug eye. Uh, this is a genuine part. Um, it's from a company called... Hmm, the masking tape off. Os... Oh man, I don't even know how to say that. Or City, something like that. Italy. It is a genuine part. If you can make that out, correct me if you know what it is. There we go. Uh, it is a genuine part. I had a look on the website and brand spanking new. These parts seem to go for like two, two fifty. Um, I have absolutely no use for it. I've sanded it all down and I've put some primer on it. it has all the genuine parts that go with it. If anybody wants it, drop me a DM on Instagram um, and we can work something out. Like I say, I have no use for it. So if nobody gets in contact with me it'll most likely end up in the skip, but it would be a shame because it is a nice splitter for the bug eye. Anyway, moving on. So the bumper that I've got has a few parts attached to it. So in order to get a really good finish, I want to get these parts off. So dealing with the kind of lower canyard bits, if you want to call them that, these were riveted on. Uh, so I had to grind out the rivets along the bottom. And then there was a couple on the side that I had to get off and then I was able just to prise the part away from the bumper. I thought it would come off quite easily after that, but no, no, no. It was uh, stuck on with a nice big blob of tiger seal, which I'm going to need to get off of the bumper. After repeating the process for the other side, it was time to move on to the fog lamp covers. Again, these have been tiger sealed in. So my approach to this was a couple of screwdrivers, and just prise the fog lamp covers away from the bumper and obviously a combination of that along with the Stanley knife to cut through the tiger seal and then eventually get the fog lamp covers out. So good news, the bumper's stripped down. Bad news is there's a lot of tiger seal that I'm going to need to go through and pick off. Like, I'm going to bring you in and show you this, just where it was and you'll see where it's been painted and shit like that. So this fog lamp cover down here, this is all painted over tiger seal. Basically they've tiger sealed in the fog lamp cover and then they've just went and painted it all. Now I mean this bumper's probably a good 15 years old. So I mean I guess that's what you done back in the day but that's not what we're about and we want this looking shit hot. So I'm going to start peeling off all this tiger seal. I'm not going to put you through the pain of watching that uh, and I'll check back in once the, all that crap's off and we're ready to move on. So it's the next morning, uh, done as much as I could last night, but basically got all the parts ready to sand. So that's what I'm going to do. Get the compressor on, get the air sander out and I'm going to start sanding. I'll show you a little bits and bobs but not too much because it can get pretty boring. Now the paint on this bumper was not in good condition at all, there was lots of cracks, lots of kind of spider webs in it, so I'm using a 220 grit sanding disc here to basically break through as much of that as possible. 
uh, before we even think about putting some high build primer on it. And in this area here I'm just using some etch primer to go over the areas where I've ended up going right through the paint and back to the plastic of the bumper. So once this is all cured up, it's then time to get on with the good stuff and that's getting the high build primer on. Now what I'm using here to apply my high build primer is a spray gun that I got following some advice from a company called GT Air. I think it was about £40. It's got a 1.8mm nozzle and this is basically the gun that they recommended to me to use for the priming phase of any kind of paint job and to be honest I'm really happy with how it performed. I've heard stories of people getting really patchy paint jobs with high build primer um, but following their advice I really can't fault the gun that they've recommended to me especially at the cost that it was. Time for a bit of an update. So what have we done? As you'll have just seen, turbo dryer. Switch that off. All right, so as you'll have just seen, I've um, sanded the bumper down, and then what I did was I gave it two, well, three coats of high build primer. From the high build primer, I was then able to spray over a kind of matte black rattle can just as a guide coat and then we've sanded that all down so that the bumper's pretty much as smooth as I can get it. Not going for perfection because I can't achieve it, I don't have a spray booth, there's going to end up being dibs and stuff like that in the paint but I want to try and get it as good as possible so I'm going to take as many steps as I can to try and get this bumper looking really good. I'll give you a quick, a quick flash of it just now. It's all sanded down, not so great around the sides but I'm not overly fussed about that because the spats will be going on in those areas, um, but the areas where you're really going to see around about here is nice and flat. So the next thing that we're going to need to do, is I always say we, me, the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to get the bumper all panel wiped, wiped down, tack rag, tack rag it off, mix up the paint and we're going to shoot some base coat. So let's get to it. I'm excited about this to see how it turns out. So I've mixed up around 250ml worth of base coat which with the paint that I've got is 125ml of the paint and 125ml of base coat thinners. Now I'm not a professional painter or anything like that, this is all purely in a garage DIY style so please don't come on and give me hate for just doing a wee DIY project this isn't professional I don't get paid for any of this sort of stuff I'm just trying to learn as I go and as you'll see coming up there's some pretty big mistakes coming First coat really didn't, <laughs> really didn't go to plan. Well, between the first and the second coat, I don't know what the hell's happened, but there's been some mad reaction across a whole load of the bumper where the paint's just wrinkled up. Um, everything was degreased, everything was all um, tack rag down, and I've laid the paint down on it. It's laid down well in some areas, but on a lot of the bumper, it's absolutely ruined. So it's going to have to come back off, or at least sandy flat again, but wait till you see the state of this. Look at the reaction, it's just all wrinkled up. That's between the first and second coats. Gave it a good 15 minutes. Got the heater on in here as well, so it's warm. But I'm genuinely so confused as to what's happened here. I'm not bothered by it because it's all a learning curve and that's part of the process, but I would love to know what's actually happened here. Alright, so we're a few days down the line and done a bit of digging, done a bit of research. Turns out it was one of potentially two things. Firstly, the temperature in here was not hot enough really to be able to paint. So 
that coupled with potentially layering the paint on a bit too thick could have caused the issues that I had. I also done a panel wipe before painting and because of the temperature again it might not have flashed off quick enough before putting that first coat down which could have caused some kind of reaction. However, I used what paint I had left and ended up with this. That's just base coat at the moment. I ran out of paint, I didn't have enough paint to finish it, I thought I did but I didn't. So I've ordered more paint, I've got it here, I'm going to mix it up now and I'm going to put some more base coat down in this. I've scuffed it up, so it's all ready to go. I just need to mix up the paint. I've got the, I've got the heaters on now, if you can see that one in the background there. I've got another one down here. So, we should have a good temperature. We should be ready to go. I just need to get ready, mix up some paint, and then we can get some more base coat on this, finish it up with some clear, and then see how it looks. So let's try this again. Second time's a charm, eh? Um, and just while I'm doing this, a big thank you goes to Advanced Paints. Uh, placed an order with them and had the new paint with me uh, the next day. So really pleased with that. And to be honest, their prices were the most competitive prices that I could find out there. Really good prices and I now have enough paint to do the full car when I'm ready to go on that. So the base coat is laid down so much nicer this time. Got a really, really nice finish. I've given it enough time to cure up. It's time to get the lacquer on. In terms of lacquer, this is what we're using. It's called uh, Final Systems. I'll put a link down below to where I got all the paint for, for doing this project. That gets mixed up at a two to one ratio. It comes, it comes with the, the lacquer and the hardener. So it comes, you can buy it as a pack, so you get the right amount of lacquer to uh, hardener. And then I've mixed it up in these little mixing pots. This one gets mixed up at a two to one ratio, and there's little marks on these cups. So you fill your lacquer up to the two, and then you fill your uh, hardener thinners up to reduce or whatever you want to call it, up to the one. And then that's you got the correct mixing ratio for that specific uh, clear coat. So I'm going to get it in the gun and then I'm going to get it laid down and see how good this looks. Now, I'm very conscious that I'm going to be boring people by just painting a bumper from the same angle all the time, but stick with it. Uh, this is the first coat of the clear coat, which goes on as a bit of a lighter coat. And then the subsequent couple of coats go on a bit heavier to really give that nice flat flow finish. You'll see what I mean just now. After a few mistakes, a few errors, a few paint reactions, I did finally get there and end with this bumper and I could not be happier with how it's turned out. There is very little oil, eh, uh, oil? There is very little orange peel. Considering that this was done in a garage, there's, there is a few dust nibs, but do you know what, I'm not that bothered about it. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I'm not going for, pe for perfection and if the rest of the car turns out as well as this bumper does, I'm going to be absolutely over the moon. I'll just go in for a closer look now, show you it up, and then we can wrap up the video. So this is how it's turned out. Really good depth of finish there. Like I say, it is a few days later, so this has now all fully cured, and the gloss on it's fantastic. This was that area that if you've seen me putting up a picture a couple of days back, where the paint was all swelled up and wrinkled, had to sand it right back, I had to re-primer it, had to re-sand everything and honestly the finish I'm absolutely over the moon with. So just as we're looking at some before and afters of the bumper, I'd just like to take this moment to say thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and as always I'll see you on the next one.